Hello and welcome back to a Battletech guide. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a look at the burning question of how to equip your mechs correctly. What is the best weapon in the game and how much armor is needed on each location in order to beat the game on the highest difficulty in regular and punch above your mech's weight class. Before we begin, I recommend checking out some of the other videos I am creating. I usually play strategy games on the highest difficulty level and have quite a few world's first achievements on my channel. So, if you are interested in that, just give it a go. With that shameless plug out of the way, uh, let's jump right into the content, shall we? So, what makes a good mech build in Battletech? There are quite a few parts to this question, so this video is really only going to focus on the very basics, which will be definitely enough to get you through a career playthrough, even on the hardest difficulty. I will also focus on teaching principles instead of concrete builds, so that way you can apply these principles to your own builds as you go. In order to answer the question what really makes a good mech build, I would like to look at different weapons and questions about armor separately. They are for me both sides of uh, a simple equation, and oftentimes you will be forced to make decisions as trade-off between armor and firepower anyways. Other aspects like heat management, skills, lance compositions and special equipment will be covered in other videos to keep this one here to a reasonable length. So let's start with the armor side first, shall we? And with that we're stripping all of the equipment and we're taking a look at armor. Each mech uh, has an equal amount of armor and structure on each of uh, its locations, meaning that the amount of armor that you can put on each of uh, the positions is equal to the amount of structural points that this position already has. Armor is a buffer for damage and refreshes between missions. It takes zero days to put on and off, and it costs extra tonnages, while structure, so the underlying, is basically already existing in the mech, and is determined by its size class. When armor is being damaged, the mech will not receive any further issues such as explosions as long as the underlying structure is intact. Once the armor however is gone, structure is taking damage and the remaining damage on each of the position uh, will lead to structural damage. As soon as that happens, problems occur such as ammunition explosion or destruction of equipment. So the core question therefore is how much armor is needed on each of the locations. And to simplify that answer is my suggestion to you would be to always put the full maximum size on all of uh, the locations. If you need to take a bit of armor off in the later stages of your build, try doing that moderately and start with the back of the mech. Never go below 50% on each of the armor locations on the back. I would further recommend not to start chipping off armor at all of the other locations. Anything less than 90% of armor is really ineffective. And why is that? So let's look at the game and break it a bit down mathematically. In order to be efficient, you need to select the most efficient traits or the most efficient selections. And mathematically speaking, armor is just way more efficient than weapons. The reason for that is pretty simple. Armor is effective and very, very cost effective indeed. For a single ton of mech usage, you will get up to 80 points of armor. So let's uh, take a look at this 50 um, tons right here, 200 armor at that location. If we go down all the way to 49 tons, we're down to 120. So, in other words, 80 points of armor equal one ton. In comparison to that, so is that a lot or not, in comparison to that, the most effective gun in the entire game, except Star League technology, will net you around 25 to 30 points of damage for a single ton. So armor de facto offers more than three times as much value compared to the offensive counterpart in this time and in this case even ignoring heat buildup and assuming the most efficient damage weapon in the game in fact even with evasion blips in this game Battletech tends to have put you into many many situations where you will simply take a damage so not receiving damage at all is not a realistic scenario, specifically not over multiple missions or multiple lance fights in a row within a single mission. To illustrate my point further, with skills like Bulwark, Vigilance, 
Lance mods and terrain, you can gain up to 80% of damage reduction on your mech on a regular basis, which means that 80 points of armor all of a sudden just become effective 400 points of armor for a single ton. So whenever you design a mech, the first option uh, should always be to strip uh, the equipment completely, as I've shown here, out of all of the weapons and whatever else is loaded, and then maximizing your armor. The fine-tuning process at the end of the mech build can then um, include taking off some of the armor. And for sniper and LRM boat builds, you might go a little bit lower than 90%, but not by a much. That is how good armor is within this game. Secondly, let's take a look at the weapon side next. So before we're jumping into the weapons, I shortly would like to review win conditions in Battletech, i.e. what do you want your mech build to do in order to kill the enemy. And there are several approaches to that. Number one, you can go for overheating and then afterwards target shooting. That is wildly ineffective within the game, typically due to the low range that these weapons do have. There are missile alternatives, but they are also not really effective. The enemies can have heat banks installed in their mechs and generally any form of overheating has a low amount of ammunition. Plus it also does not deal any damage and certain biomes are really making it difficult. So generally stay away from that strategy. That already excludes quite a few weapons. The second option is to deal stability damage and then essentially knock the enemy over and start target shooting. This works, generally speaking, better on smaller mechs, can be countered, however, via gyros, so stabilizers, and is very difficult to pull off against heavier mechs, specifically those who have braced. Vehicles, additionally, are completely immune to it, so it can be used in moderation, but it shouldn't be your main approach to generally approach the game that way. Which leaves us with option number three, which is plain and simple damage dealing. That is a 99.9% .9 the normal strategy in order to overcome enemy opposition. So when we're looking at weapons in Battletech overall, there are generally three categories of weapons. Ballistic weapons on the one hand, which you can see under the ballistic register here. They, are, they tend to be high in weight moderate to high in damage depending on uh, the weapon and moderate in heat generation. Their range typically decreases with caliber size. As the calibers go big, uh, bigger, usually you need to get uh, uh, closer and closer to the enemy. Secondly, there are missiles. Missiles are moderate in weight, moderate in damage and moderate in heat. They also tend to deal quite a bit of um, structure stability rather damage and they are split into short and long ranges short ranges typically excelling at damage long ranges typically excel excelling at the fact that you don't need to stand next to the enemy and thirdly there are lasers which is the third um, large category low weight moderate to high damage and typically high in heat they have unlimited ammunition compared to the other two so that is really speaking for them Contrary to ballistic weapons, their range uh, and heat increases with their size. Fourthly, there are support weapons, or three of them do have uh, support weapons, well, missiles, not necessarily, but ballistic and laser weapons do have support uh, weapons, and flamers essentially are support weapons as well. So, long story short, that's just the general categories. Now, how should you go about determining which of the weapons really fit into your hard points? Here, my approach to that would be breaking it down again into weight, including weight for ammunition that you need to put on top of it, then damage, and then heat generation. So these three variables are really at the core of a good strategy. And the way that I approach it is I am looking at weight per uh, uh, damage per tonnage that you would get so essentially dividing damage by the weight of the weapon and then de depending on your mech maybe adjusting it for heat so let's make that hopefully uh, not too complex i prepared a bit of an excel uh, for you guys so that we can take a look into that so what i prepared here is basically an overview 
uh, over all of the weapons in Battletech, including all of the weapons from the expansions. And there is a lot to cover, so I'll be brief about it. And you can always pause the video here in order to look at the numbers in detail to basically do your own math behind it. It's really not that complicated. And instead of going through all of it in detail, I will potentially just highlight a few weapons to make it easier to give you a couple of takeaways. So if you don't want to listen uh, through all of the, uh, the math, the net net of it is the highlighted green weapons are the ones that I would be recommending. SRMs in general, LRM 5 and 15s, machine guns, small lasers, medium lasers, mortars, AC-20s, the UAC weapons, the extended range medium and small laser, the small pulse, and to a degree the SNAP PPC as well as uh, the LBXs. So the light green weapons being the ones that are not that effective. If you just want the basic, basic uh, version of it, if you're building around medium lasers, SRMs, and maximize your M uh, armor on each of the slots, you already do have a very competitive setting on your mech. So let's take a look at the math behind it and what is effective and what isn't. What I've done basically is I've taken the tonnage of all of uh, the weapons, I've taken the damage of all of the weapons, I divided damage by tonnage, and then conditionally formatted so that you guys can easily see it. The higher the value, the more damage per tonnage you get. Then there is a second value because now you can make an argumentation that you don't have unlimited heat. So I put in a small uh, heat penalty, so to speak, for weapons. The higher the heat that they produce, the bigger the penalty is. And you can see that that changes the order a bit, but not dramatically. So let's take about uh, let's talk about the winners in that setup from a damage per ton, and even after the uh, heat adjustment efficiency, both the medium and the small lasers are incredibly efficient from the base weapons. If you get your hands on a mortar, that is also very efficient in the more enemies you can hit with a mortar of course that would just double and triple matter of fact if you are using a thumper for instance and hit six enemies you have definitely hit the jackpot with that si uh, simple weapon shot because you would uh, potentially hit something over a hundred maybe 200 uh, damage per ton just because you hit so many parts so let's take the mortar out of the equation medium lasers and small lasers are incredibly efficient and they also, as you can see, only generate moderate heat, 6 and 12, which is fine, given that every mech can down 30 heat and every Starlink mech even 60 heat. That, as a standard, everything around, this is actually quite manageable, even if you have multiples of those, which kind of gets to show that this is the standard weapon and it is an evergreen, never gets old. If you look at the missiles, on the other hand, it is interesting to see that, number one, small missiles just scale linearly. So it really depends on how many hard points you do have and how much tonnage you do have available. Assuming that you have enough tonnage to load it, uh, SRM6s are definitely the way to go. They become highly, highly effective from a damage perspective and they deal some stability damage on top of it. On the LRM side, the ones that I highlight would be LRM 5 and 15. The way that that works is the game designers actually have uh, failed to concrete, uh, con uh, correctly implement the tonnage requirements. So instead of uh, letting it run linearly 2.5, 5, 7.5 and 10, they forgot the dot five here, which essentially uh, rounded down the LRM fives and LRM fifteens, making them therefore more effective. They generally are less effective than the SRMs. So whenever you want to build a brawler, never go for the LRMs. Take the SRMs instead. You can see they are twice as effective damage-wise. But the LRMs have a playstyle uh, efficiency because you can simply use a complete LRM boat and just fully unload onto the enemy without them even being in, uh, you being in their range. You can sensor lock with one person and then 
basically use multiple LRM bolts to grind them down. It's a strategy that is not effective in very high uh, difficulties due to you running out of LRMs, but it is one that offers little counterplay if you then simply want to e evacuate as soon as uh, your ammunition is over. So LRMs generally, one LRM boat definitely can make sense in a lance. So I can see well why you would want to do that. If you do it, use LRM fives and LRM fifteens. Uh, then with the expansion weapons, the extended range, small and medium lasers come with the same weight requirement. They just create more heat, but they also deal more damage. And specifically, ER small lasers are absolutely fantastic. Support weapons like small lasers and machine guns, you can see, always score high on the damage per tonnage. And they even score infinitively uh, high on a little bit later uh, technology. There are machine guns that weigh literally zero tons and still deal damage. So there is no reason to not put them into the mech unless you want to save space. But this here should only be a review for the base weapons. So net net of it, um, small lasers and machine guns, as well as ER small lasers, if you can you get your hands on, and even a small pulse lasers, all are highly uh, effective. A couple of shout outs would potentially go to the UAC weapons, ballistic weapons, typically in my humble opinion, uh, tend to underperform in the game uh, a bit and short of the AC-20, most of the other weapons in my perspective are really outshined by uh, the counterparts on, on the other side. The UAC weapons were able to rectify some, uh, at least partially, some of that because you're going to get a much higher burst although they require a cooldown period to re-aim just due to their recoil. So recoil is a huge uh, thing. I gave them a light green. You can use them and some mechs just have ballistic hard points, so then you st would need to do them. But if you go for ballistic weapons, by all means, go for the UAC ones or for the LB10s and LB, uh, LB20s. Those are tend to be also quite good, although not as pointed damage as others. So that's the net net of the weapon overview. And now let's see how everything comes together when we're actually building and equipping the mech. Good, back to the example of the Orion that we had earlier. I said we're starting with essentially stripping all of the weapons away from the Orion. And then the first thing that I would uh, do is I would check the remaining tons that are available, in this case 25. And I would check the hard points. We do have two laser hard points, three of the missile hard points, and two of the ballistic hard points. The way that I would go about it is as a standard, I start with laser weapons and would go, and we're, not, we're just taking the standard weapons that are available. So I would take the extended ranged medium lasers, as they offer a 35 um, a calorie, 30, 35 damage per ton ratio both of the hard points are being taken next up i would go since it doesn't have any uh, support uh, weapon hard points i would go to use missiles given that this guy is already in a higher range you are now at uh, the crossroad in deciding whether or not you want to make it the full missile boat uh, with LRMs and just use the ER uh, medium lasers as an addition, or if you want to go all the way in in order to do kind of that brawler type of setup, I, in this case, decide that I want a brawler. The Orion is a good model that allows for various setups. We can check the firepower of the Orion already 210. That is not uh, too bad. Of course, we would need to pick ammunition. The way that I go about ammunition is I'll check the ammunition container, 100 shots, that is six, 12, 18 shots. So that is five uh, rep repetitions. And I tend to go for 10 to 12 reps so that the mech can actually stay in the fight for quite a while. After that, uh, in most of the missions, it is okay to have been running out of ammunition. So. 
with that setup so far we're still having about 12 13 uh, pounds of equipment left over and i'm not taking any of the additional equipment that you normally uh, would take or therefore starting to look at heat heat efficiency we're sinking 30 heat uh, per standard and we're at 76 heat so without going too deep into heat management just for the, uh, the perspective of this guide assume that you want to have the heat differential of minus 20 that means if we're producing 76 heat on a regular basis i want to be at 56 heat um, sinking in order to make that happen which means before we're even continuing to entertain anything else i would like to put in a couple of heat sinks i'm not using any of uh, the special modes we're just uh, using standard equipment here to make the guide as easy and relatable as possible ammunition always goes into the legs uh, because in the side torso it would injure and further spur explosions in the head and in the torso it would even kill that's not even that, that is not realistic we don't want that to happen so we're taking a look and we do have five tons left over and we're more or less at a decent position and now you're in that tough spot to decide do you really want that extra weapon yes or no does it make sense so one thing that you could do for that build is it is a brawlerish type of build and you could now take a look at the ballistic weapons that are available the ones that are sort of lightweight ish again i'm not going to take any special weapons here i've talked about the uacs so Unfortunately, I don't have a standard UAC. Let's just take that for the sake of the argumentation. We're building in one UAC. Never do that without also immediately going for the ammunition. Same deal. Ammunition holds 25 rounds, two shots per uh, execution of the weapon. So that's 12 iterations, 12 reps is good for the mech. We do have a base build, but we're 1.3 tons over. From a heat efficiency standpoint we're currently netting a 30-ish deficit however the uac needs to cool off every uh, now and uh, then so we're potentially a little bit too hot and we're potentially a tiny bit too heavy so what i would do in that uh, specific case is knowing that the srms are scaling linearly i would exchange the uh, sixer for a fora uh, that brings us almost into position. Then I would chuck off some of uh, the armor from the back and that's it. That's a basic fast build that you can do. And I can promise you it's not the optimal build, but it is very close to a highly efficient and competent build. If you all of uh, the hard points that are available for you, a very good hard point usage uh, for the tonnage that you have available, you've maximized all of your armor. You have a nice slate of different weapons. Matter of fact, if you look at the range, it's even actually quite good because it has an overlapping uh, range of all of the weapons in the 300 uh, meter category where all of the weapons will, um, or 200 meter category rather, where all of the weapons will definitely work quite well. and you can engage even on longer distance with the uh, uac2 so that would be a build of going with the orion from a heat efficiency perspective this is a bit of a hotter mech so we're uh, we're netting 29 instead of 20 heat differential given that the uac however only shoots every two turns you can deduct give and take five heat from that so half of the heat that it is producing so we're still on the okay side you could certainly make an argument to chip off even more armor put another heat sink in or just use other means to sink the heat better or have a pilot that can deal with higher heat so this mac would even work well on hot biomes as it is and therefore kind of mission achieved that is a standard build that you can take i hope you found the guide uh, helpful if you like the guide and other videos that are informative quick and cut to the uh, cut the chase go to all of the facts then check out the other videos on my channel see you all and have a good evening bye bye